bless each other, be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. You shall take possession of their land. May this time be the time where you really open up your spiritual eyes. What kind of works arise when the people that are really saved give worship? The angels worship and the glory of God is upon us. May the praise of, of the choir that they gave be the answer that is given today. When the Israelites were resenting and crumb crumbling, that is when God gave them the word. And when they were grumbling because they were hungry, God gave them manna. And when they looked down upon the priest, God made the staff of Aaron budded, bud and presented them the power of God. And having three things inside it is the Ark of the Covenant. God told Moses to make the Ark of the Covenant. Inside there, there are the two stone tablets that represent the Word of God. And there was a jar of manna which represented the guidance of God. And there was the staff of Aaron that has that has budded and that is represents the power of God. Whatever the circumstances or environment we may be in, it's all the plan of God. In the midst of all of the works that we do and in the midst of the continuous training, there is all good plan of God. I'm not telling you to fall into idol worship. But um, you may fall into idol worship, but in the midst of all of that, there is the plan of God. But in all of the process, uh, in the midst of the wilderness, there were all plan of God. They made them carry the Ark of the Covenant through the wilderness and made them go inside the land of Canaan. Why was that? God gave them the Ark of the Covenant so that the people of Israel do not fail again. We do not need the Ark of the Covenant now. Because inside of us, there is the more, uh, the complete and perfect Ark of the Covenant that is inside me as a blessing. Uh, we do not need the Ark of the Covenant right now. Uh, 
we must have the blessing that is complete and perfect uh, of the Ark of the Covenant inside of us. Then first, we must take a look at the meaning of the Ark of the Covenant. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant, there is the two stone tablets. They place the uh, Ten Commandments inside of the Ark of the Covenant. And, uh, on the, um, upon the mountain, that is when God gave the Moses the st two stone tablets. But when Moses came down from the mountain and saw the Israelites, it was a mess. Because there he fell into the idol worship. But Moses was furious and he threw the two stone tablets down. And that is when the land split and swallowed up the people who are giving idol worship with the two stone tablets. But if you see in the passage, you can see that God gives him the two stone tablets again. And even in the book of Exodus, it speaks of this. And he placed the two stone tablets that he made again, or God gave him again, and placed it inside of the Ark of the Covenant. And this was to... A stone tablet was used to curse the people of Israel who gave idol worship. What is our greatest idol? What is the greatest idol that is inside me? It is living with my own standards and living with the background of the world. We always speak of the gospel, but we all live in my standards and my self-centeredness. We must see if this is the gospel or not, but how are we? No regards to the gospel, we say, if things, if I think this is correct, it's correct. If I think this is wrong, it's wrong. We always say the gospel, we speak of the gospel, but at the decisive moment, we go back to my own standards. We always talk about uh, our background is Christ. But then, to us, money is our background, the peop people are my background, and we always uh, look towards the background of the world. But that is idol. There are idols that we see with our eyes, making a Buddhist, and we uh, there are rocks and making some kind of form with trees. But what is scarier is living with my own standards and living with the background of the world. We must hold to the word of the pulpit. But we uh, hold on to my own stubbornness and my own standards more than the p word of the, that is proclaimed in the pulpit. If you are in the midst of the word that is proclaimed in the pulpit, then God will lead us. Then we must really hold on to the, pulp, the word of the pulpit, but we always hold on to our own standards. 
We must hold on to the word, but we tend to lose hold of this. How, how was the, what was the situation when Moses threw down the first two stone tablets? They were uh, worshipping the golden ox. Why did they make this idol? Because the people asked for it. And Aaron made all the people bring gold and made it. They made this stone a uh, golden ox. And what did it say? They said, this is the God that led me out of Egypt. And they even named it, this is the Uh, the God that is of Jehovah. They made this idol with their own standards. This is what is scarier. We must always stand in front of the world, but we always hold on to our own standards and live on. If we really hold on to the word and we really follow after the word, then we can overcome our limitations. And the work of the Holy Spirit is shown through us. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive salvation, then we restore the image of God and our dead soul is revived and the word of God becomes my strength because we are a living uh, being that is when when the word comes upon us we receive power so when we receive the word how does it show through the field it's shown as the power and we say that this is the momentum of life. This uh, is a. It says in the Bible that the Word of God is living and active. Gospel itself is life. Even if this seed is tiny and small, if it has life, it becomes a great tree. The lion is a very powerful, strong animal, but if it's dead, it cannot even win over a living puppy. Why can you not uh, enjoy this blessing? That is because they are living the walk of faith with their own standards. Even if this is a loss to you, even if this does not become any help to you, really follow after the word. With your own thoughts, with your standards and the background of the world, things do not take place. The, as the word of God and the standard of God, that is fulfilled inside of the field, not our thoughts and not our own standards. That is why we must quickly put down all of our standards. Some people say this. This person said, oh, what if we receive word? I know why he said that. He does not live by that way. He doesn't uh, live by the word.
It's okay if you do not live by the word. But the person that received the word, they have hope. Do you really uh, put everything to place inside your life? When you receive the word and when you react to it, that is when God works. Even if you cannot uh, live by that word, but if you're inside of the place where you receive the word, and when that word comes inside of my soul, that is when works take place. I'm not telling you to go and fail. And I'm not even telling you to go out and have success. You must live on. But when the word is really placed inside of us, that is when we are revived. When we receive the spiritual power, that is when we are able to live the spiritual life. We always think to ourselves, we must do something. You must say that, oh, just listening to the word is enough. Just say that, you know, I didn't receive grace that last time, but when I received the word today, I'm receiving grace. Do you know what kind of boundary is made? How is the fence or the boundaries of the world? They live by the Genesis 3, 6, and 11. When they're in the midst of that, they have no choice but to fall deeper inside that. That is the boundary of the world. But what is our boundary? The triune God is giving me strength. And that strength is the five blessings. And that is when we are able to confirm the things that God has given us. And in the midst of that, you are able to see the plan of God inside of the field. That is our boundary. Then inside of this boundary, things take taking place or not, that's not what is important. If you're inside the boundaries of the world, if things do take place, the more it takes place, it's... Um, it's a curse. But if you're inside the boundaries of the blessing of God, then things can take place or not. Or things do, might not take place, but that is not what is important. It's the, how God is guiding me. That is why you must make the boundaries of the blessing of God. And enjoying that is the true prayer. That is why you must not lose hold of listening to the, holding on to the word and really receiving guidance from the word. And that is why God made the two stone tablets and placed it inside of the Ark of the Covenant. And inside of the Ark of the Covenant, what else is inside it? It is the jar of manna. As the Israelites were going through the wilderness, they could not farm. That is why God gave them manna and fed them. But the Israelites are always falling into the unbelief. They say, I'm hungry and I, there's nothing to drink. But isn't that our image? We always grumble, there is nothing to eat, there is nothing to drink, and we are grumbling and resenting. That is why God gave them manna 
and drinking water. What does this mean? God is completely taking care of, of our life. The Israelites, for 40 years, they did not even lose uh, or move their fingers, but they were able to eat and drink. And there were around There were around 2 million people, but all these people were able to eat and drink. And through the jar of manna, they, uh, uh, God is showing that God is uh, completely guiding them. If you're inside of the Word, then God completely leads you. If you see in the book of Matthew, even the birds in the sky, God feeds them and, and gives them rest, then wouldn't God help you? And third, they placed the uh, budded staff of Aaron and made this uh, Ark of the Covenant go in front of them. There was uh, always resentment and a grumbling towards Moses, but God raised Moses as a leader. But because they, Moses did not match with them, they even tried to kill Moses. And what happened in Cardis Bernia? To the to Moses, they said, "Oh, is there no grave in Egypt? Why are you trying to kill us in this in this wilderness?" But as as they said, the wilderness became their own uh, grave. The, 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 ten, the Israelites sent ten spies or the, when they went into the land of Canaan and spied and came out they said oh, let's raise up a new leader and go back to Egypt why are you trying to kill us in the wilderness that is why the wilderness really became their own grave According to your uh, confession of faith, you can things can become a grief to you, or things can become a, com a blessing to you. That is why uh, God made the staff of Aaron bud and showed the power of God, and made the made the Israelites. A, or show the Israelites. Everything is given to us through the word, the uh, word that is proclaimed in the pulpit. That is why holding on to the pulpit message, you must really have answer. If the if this answer didn't come out, then you must really think to yourself. If you hold on to the word and go out into the field, then God will show you the answer. And in that, in midst of that, He prepares our vessel. And God gives us strength inside of this word and leads us. I heard this from a long time ago. This in Seoul, there was a Tarapang church, and next to it, there is another Tarapang church. 
there are two churches that were side by side doing Tarapan church. It was a Tarapan church. And they had uh, complicated thoughts, the, the pastors. Wouldn't they so? Uh, this person bought the church that where 500 people could go inside, but that also was a Tarapan church. So they thought to themselves, oh, will this work? But when God, because God sent the people, without, uh, it didn't matter if there was another Tarapan church there. Because when God sends people, uh, people flocked in. What does this mean? We, it is the vessel that we must prepare. Uh, there was a time where uh, we prepare for the next year's theme and how we must be guided inside of the world and we have forum. And there, what we came to a conclusion was we must really restore the first bless, blessing of the firstborn and really have go towards the 10,000 uh, believers. If you really hold on to the correct prayer topic, then God will increase or enlargen our vessel. We cannot just make our vessels large. How, but how does, how does God make our vessel large? Through the word, God uh, extends our vessel. God has already given us the word. Isn't that saving the 237 nation and the 5,000 people groups? And holding on to that, let's go towards the uh, 10,000 saints. And that is how God is extending my vessel. That is why I really hold on to the covenant. If, you're, if you follow after the word, the, the river of Jordan split. And if you really follow after the word, then the wall of Jericho will fall. In front of the word, there is nothing that can become a problem to you. Really following after the word, really go save the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. And secondly, what kind of works arise when you follow after the word or the gospel? If the gospel becomes your standard and your background, then the forces of darkness will crumble. There's something that's uh, hold, uh, holding us down. There are things where inside of us where we uh, where we are split away from the gospel and that is the darkness and this darkness when only the gospel becomes my standards and background that is when that cr uh, darkness crumbles when this takes place the throne, the blessing of the throne will come upon us and the forces of darkness will be crumbled. And all of our steps, God will guide us. And the complete Holy Spirit will lead us. And so that we do not stumble, God will lead us. 
In the midst of this world where all this uh, darkness is filling, God will lead us so that we do not fall. And here, God will lead us uh, to the end. Let's take a look at verses 10 and 11. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take the, thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their father, is to give unto them. This means when we really hold on to the gospel and follow after the word, then the, uh, conquering the land of Canaan, that blessing will be given to us. And uh, 237 nations will be uh, will be revived, and uh, our prosperities will arise. We must really follow after the word. What uh, what kind of people are disciples? The people that follow after the word is a disciple, and really having oneness. Uh, If things are taking place inside your workplace, and but if you're not following after the word, the word you're not a disciple. If you see in John eight thirty one, it, it says, "If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples." Who are disciples? It says, "If you hold to my teaching, the people that follow after the word are the disciple." And people who stay inside of the world are the disciples. Jesus told uh, Peter, "Ask Peter, are you going to leave me also? That is when, when, what did Peter say? He said, why would I? He said, I will follow after the word. If you really follow after the word and have oneness, that is where a uh, works will arise. And they place the two stone tablets, the jar of manna, and the Buddhist staff of Aaron. They placed it inside of the Ark of the Covenant and made the people follow after that. It is saying, follow after the word. And when they followed after, the river of Jordan split and the wall of Jericho fell. That is the power of God. Uh, I'll come to the end of our words. Through the gospel, God has uh, completed the mystery of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant does not exist anymore. God made it disappear. Why is that? Because there is no reason for us to have any... Uh, any interest in that. And if you see in the book of Matthew, it says, we do not need anything else. We just need Christ. That is why there is only one thing that we must be interested in. That is only Christ. And that is the completed gospel. What is the completed Ark of the Covenant? The inside of the gospel, the Christ that represents the two uh, stone tablets, the man, jar of manna that represents the kingdom of God, and the, the staff of Aaron that has budded it mean, uh, represents the Holy Spirit. Uh, 
Uh, God gave us salvation through Christ and to the people of God. God protects us. That is the kingdom of God. And with the power of the, of the Holy Spirit is still guiding us. That's why just have only in the Acts 1, 1, 3, and 8. And make only the Holy Spirit be only inside of you. And through that one person, the whole world, the, the church will be uh, saved. And that region will be saved. Why is that? To the people who hold on to only Christ, uh, the kingdom of God, and the Holy Spirit, the blessing of the throne is given to them, and the power that transcends time and space will is given upon them, and that is, that is why you are able to save the 237 nations. I really bless you in the name of Christ, where you have victory. Thank you for calling us, so that we do not, we no longer need the physical. Ark of the Covenant and letting us know that we are inside of the perfect covenant and may all of the Hana church members really hold on to this blessing in Jesus Christ we pray Amen